Welcome to Choose Your Own Adventure, brought to you by Audible. Audible Studios presents Mystery of the Maya, written by R.A. Montgomery, performed by Kyla Garcia. Warning. This story is different from other stories. You and you alone are in charge of what actually happens. There are dangers, adventures, and consequences, all depending on the choices you make. And the wrong choice could end in disaster, even death. Good luck. It is night. You are standing on the flat top of a stone pyramid. Men dressed in long green robes crowd around you. They chant and sing in a language you don't understand. You look into the misty light for your friend Tom. Suddenly you see him, struggling for his life. He is strapped to an altar, his arms and legs tied down. Tom's terrified eyes meet yours, and you see him mouth the words, Help me, please. A man in robes and carrying a dagger steps forward. Moving towards Tom. No! You scream, reaching out. You lunge forward, but the only thing you clasp is the lamp next to your bed. You jerk awake and sit up, looking around. You are home in your own room. There's no altar, no singing men. You take some deep breaths. It was just a bad dream. Three days ago, your best friend Tom disappeared on assignment in Mexico. He was doing a piece for cable TV on the ancient Mayan temples at Chichen Itza. His assistant Amanda called to tell you the news. Tom was onto a hot story, but he wouldn't say what on the phone. After he was reported missing, the police found a dark red stain on the stone of the Mayan's altar. No one has seen him since, Amanda tells you. Who called to tell you? You ask. Tom's guide, Manuel. Tom said that if anything happened to him, I should call you right away, she replies. Do you think you could go down there to look for him? I'm really worried. Do you continue your journey? Several hours later, you land at Merida and pass through customs. Suddenly, as if appearing out of nowhere, a man is by your side. Hello. My name is Manuel. I am to be your guide. Welcome to Mexico. He shakes your hand and smiles. Manuel's skin shines like copper. His large nose and sloping forehead remind you of the ancient Mayan paintings and stone carvings in the books you studied on the plain. Suddenly you realize that Manuel himself must have descended from the Mayan people. The civilization, many say, collapsed 800 years ago but its people live on to this day. I tried to help Tom, Manuel says, grabbing your heaviest suitcase. But, unfortunately, he did not always take my advice. Maybe together we can find him? Where do you think we should start, Manuel? You ask. Perhaps at the university? Dr. Lopez might help. He is a leading expert on Mayan culture. Or maybe we should go straight to Chichen Itza, the last place Tom was seen alive. Do you visit Dr. Lopez, or go straight to Chichen Itza? You decide to go straight to Chichen Itza to talk to the police. First, you and Manuel drive to your hotel in Merida to spend the night. Merida was founded by the Spanish after their conquest of Mexico in the 16th century. Their old churches and fortresses give the town a Spanish flavor. Tomorrow we begin, Manuel says. Chichen Itza, the largest site of Mayan ruins, is famous as a center of lost power. It holds a huge pyramid, a domed observatory, a deep water hole or cenote, and the famed and feared ball court. In ancient times, the losers of the ball game also lost their lives. That night, you notice that Manuel is quiet. He clears his throat to speak. I have been thinking. 
Manuel begins. You may want to go to Ushmal first. While smaller than Chichen Itza, Ushmal is far older. The temple of the magicians at Ushmal is filled with mystery. That last day, Tom kept it a secret where he went, Manuel adds. Do you continue on to Chichen Itza, or do you go to Ushmal instead? You've got a hunch that Tom might have gone to Ushmal. You go with Manuel to the bus station for the trip there. The trip is long and hot, but finally you arrive at the ruins of the city. The Temple of the Magicians looms over the land. Steep stone steps ascend to a smaller temple building on top of the pyramid. Across from the Temple of the Magicians is a large rectangular building which the Spanish conquistadors called the Nunnery. No one really knows what it was used for. What do you think, Manuel? Any ideas about its purpose? You ask. Manuel hesitates for a minute and says, Perhaps the building was the palace of the shamans. Maybe they conducted their magic there. Where should you start looking? At the Temple of the Magicians or the Nunnery? What would Tom have done if he had come to Ushmal? Do you investigate the Temple of the Magicians or the Nunnery? The words Temple of the Magicians excite you. You walk toward the huge pyramid, but a crowd of tourists is busy snapping cameras and pushing and shoving. They surround the base. You stand for a moment, waiting for the crowd to clear, when an old man with wrinkled skin wearing the colorful shawl of the Maya shuffles up to you. Come with me, he says, beckoning with a hand crippled with age. I will take you to see a very deep water hole. A secret cenote. Water is scarce in this dry land, and the cenotes are the most important reasons for choosing a place to live. Without water, there is no chance to live. You will be amazed at what I will show you at this cenote. You look around, but Manuel is nowhere to be seen. Where has he gone? Do you go with the old man, or stay put, waiting for Manuel? You have always been an adventurer, so of course you follow the old man to the secret cenote. The trail is a faint path through the tangle of bushes, and within fifteen minutes you are completely lost. Hey, old man! Where is this cenote of yours? He turns and smiles at you. Here it is. But instead of a cenote, you find yourself surrounded by three men. One of them holds a gun, and the other two have knives. They do not smile. Give us your money. You fumble for your wallet. There are two American ten-dollar bills and three hundred Mexican pesos. You hand them over to the men. They tie you up with a rough hemp rope, load you onto a donkey, and move off into the jungle. We will hold you for ransom. Your people will pay and pay plenty. We have another hostage. You will keep him company. You hope that your family will be able to come up with the ransom money. You also hope that the other hostage is Tom. The End would you like to see what would have happened if you decided to stay put and wait for Manuel? Going back to stay put and wait for Manuel. In the crowd surrounding the ruins of the Temple of the Magicians, you become separated from Manuel when an old man approaches you. He offers to take you to see a secret cenote. He claims you will be amazed at what you will see. You ignore the old man. Who knows what he is after? 
As you walk away from him, a rock with a piece of paper wrapped around it drops at your feet. You look up, startled, but you see no one who could have dropped this rock. The paper contains a short message that says, Return to the nunnery. Meet with us in the seventh room. The message is signed with a red handprint. What should you do? Manuel is walking back toward you. You rush over and show him the note. Manuel looks at the note and shakes his head. Leave it alone. It could be dangerous. Do you ignore Manuel's advice and go to the nunnery? Or do you instead go to the Mexican police? The red handprint is ominous. What can it mean? You enter the seventh room in the nunnery building. Although it is dark inside, you see a face. It is luminous and glows with a soft yellowish light. A person clothed in silver with golden armbands stands in the middle of the room. You and three others have been chosen to journey to far space. Ushmal is our earth base. Join us if you have the courage. The earth as we know it will no longer be safe. You listen in amazement to all that he says. It sounds like the prediction made by Mayan priests hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It is scary, because maybe they were right. Tom suddenly appears, and it is clear he has already been to space and back. Come with us, he tells you. It is time. You decide to go with them. The end. Would you like to see what would have happened if you decided to go instead to the Mexican police? Going back to go instead to the Mexican police. You ignore the old man. A moment later, a notice slipped to you, telling you to go to the seventh room in the nunnery. It's signed with a red handprint. Manuel thinks the offer is dangerous. You see two policemen near the tourist buses. We're sorry, but we can't help you. We are too busy. We are trying to find one of your countrymen who vanished several weeks ago. You show them the note. When they see the sign of the red hand, they become very excited. Wait. Just one minute. Don't leave. Stay right there. They talk in hushed tones, and then they radio their headquarters. The captain is coming right away. Soon you hear the whirring of a helicopter. When it lands in the courtyard, three men get out. Let me see the note. It is the captain speaking. He is a heavy man with a black mustache. Aha! I see. The red hand. This is the mark of the revolutionaries. How did you come by this note? Do you know the American named Tom? Do you cooperate with the police? Or try to get out of this mess of the red hand? At police headquarters, you repeat your story. The police keep firing questions at you. How did you get here? Why did you come here? Tell us the truth. Finally, they give up the questioning. Everyone is exhausted. The captain now turns to you, stubs out his evil-smelling cigarette in the full ashtray, looks you in the eye and says, Okay. He pauses. Are you brave? Will you agree to become a double agent? Join the revolutionary gang. Pretend to be one of them. We need information. You can help us stop this revolt. But how can I do it? They'll find out that I'm working for you and they'll kill me. That is the risk you take. But what can I say? The one named Tom agreed to help. Where would I start if I agree to be a double agent? The captain points to a map on the wall. See? There is the island of Cancun. It's a hotbed of revolutionaries. You would go there. Or you could go to Merida. 
That is the headquarters of the gang. We think your friend Tom went there, but no one knows. Do you agree to go to Merida or to Cancun? The road to Merida is narrow, dusty, and bumpy. Every face on the bus seems to be staring at you. You wonder if they know that you are an agent of the police. You get a creepy feeling up and down your spine. Once you are in Merida, you place a call to a man who runs a jewelry shop. His name is Julio. As the police suggested, he is the contact for the Red Hand Gang. To your surprise, they are a fine group of people. They believe that they must fight so that the poor can have land to farm and a chance to make a good living. They tell you about the government that favors the rich and punishes the poor. They welcome you into their ranks. Late one night, as you sit around a table in the cellar of an old hotel, you feel that now is the time for a decision. Should you join them? Tell them who you are and become a triple agent? Feeding the police the wrong information? Or should you continue on as a spy in their midst? So far you have only heard talk. You have seen no proof of their dedication to the poor. Tom is nowhere to be seen. Do you decide to fight for their cause or continue to spy on them? You have heard of revolutionaries before, and you don't believe this group is really interested in the people. You suspect they keep the money they collect at the meetings. When you refuse to go on a mission chosen for you, they suddenly turn on you. You are a spy. You are our enemy. They tie you up. The ropes bite into your wrists. After two days, when your bones ache and your body wants to cry out for help, they come to you. You are too dangerous to let go. We have held a meeting. We are sorry, but you must die. To your amazement, Tom appears with the leader. This one is no threat. I'll be responsible. You are freed, and Tom says, Leave, and don't come back. The End Would you like to see what would have happened if you decided to fight for the Red Hand's cause? Going back to fight for the Red Hand's cause. Taking a bus to Merida, you infiltrate the Red Hand Gang. To your surprise, you find that they are a fine group of people. They talk a good game about helping the poor. But Tom is nowhere to be seen. You started out in search of Tom, but now you are a member of the revolutionary Red Hand Gang. You and your group do not use violence to reach your goals. You don't kidnap people. You don't hijack planes. You don't blow up buildings. Instead, you talk with the people. You encourage them to demand elections, to demand land reform. You teach them about Mexican law and how to use it. You give them hope and belief. But the work is dangerous. There are people who want to stop the Red Hand at any cost. Your life is in constant danger. But you are committed to your work as a revolutionary. The End Would you like to see what would have happened if you decided to go to Cancun? Going back to go to Cancun. The police captain has forced you into becoming a double agent, with the task of getting information so that the revolution can be stopped. He tells you Tom did the same before you. You can go to Cancun, a hotbed of revolutionaries, or to Merida, their headquarters. Tom may be in Merida. Cancun is like a giant amusement park, crowded, noisy, filled with tourists. You don't know where to begin looking for Tom or for the Red Hand Gang. Your only lead is the head bellman at the ritziest hotel on the Strip. That night, you contact him. Big mistake. 
you vanish into the angry sea. The end. Would you like to see what would have happened if you decided to try to get out of this mess of the red hand? Going back to try to get out of this mess of the red hand. You've turned the note with the red hand over to the police, and their response is intense. They call for their captain who arrives by helicopter. The red hand, it seems, is the mark of the revolutionaries, and apparently Tom is mixed up with them somehow. You start to run, but soon you are surrounded by angry policemen. Manuel comes up to you and whispers in your ear, if you take this time potion now, you'll get out of this mess. Here. He hands you a small bottle and you drink it. The police are amazed because one moment you are there, and the next you are gone. What happened? W -w where did the prisoner go? It's too late. You are back in the past. They will never find you. But how will you ever return to the present? The end. You've explored 39% of the story and discovered 9 of 40 possible endings. Would you like to see what would have happened if you'd decided to investigate the nunnery? Going back to investigate the nunnery. Arriving by bus in Ushmal, you and Manuel are looking at two old buildings. The Temple of the Magicians is an imposing pyramid. A large rectangular building dubbed the Nunnery by Spanish conquistadors may have originally been used by shamans for magical rituals. The building called the Nunnery is intricately designed with carvings of birds, snakes, and human-like creatures. There are few clues as to what the building was used for. The rooms are too dark to have been used for living quarters. Poking around in a dark room with a flashlight, you see a piece of white paper stuck to the far wall. It says, Hotel Maya, Chichen Itza, room 927, Thursday night. You must come. There is danger. You puzzle over the note. It is Thursday. Is this note for you? How could it be? What should you do? A figure moves quickly from an adjoining room. Did that person follow you and leave the note? Do you go to the Hotel Maya or keep investigating the nunnery? Don't like taking chances, do you? Okay, go ahead. The next room is small and as dark as the others. You step cautiously into the room. Suddenly, the floor beneath you gives way, and you fall into a bright blue space, gathering speed at the rate of 32 feet per second. The rush of air against you flattens your nose against your face, slicks your hair back, and squishes your lips. The trap door opened onto a chute into the very heart of the nunnery. Three levels below ground lies a secret ceremonial chamber where magic was conducted. Now you are but a participant in a great ancient Mayan ceremony. The End Would you like to see what would have happened if you decided to go to the Hotel Maya? Going back to go to the Hotel Maya. Having just arrived in Ushmal, you investigate the nunnery. There you find a mysterious note directing you to a room at the Hotel Maya in Chichen Itza that evening. It says, You must come. There is danger. Who put the note in the darkened room? Who could have known you would be there and would find it? It might well be the secret forces of the Maya at work, forces too hidden for most humans to understand. You are fascinated. You check into the Hotel Maya. At nine o'clock, when you walk down the corridor to room 327, soldiers leap out of rooms 328 and 329 and arrest you. They are all heavily armed. You can smell the oil on the weapons. 
Their captain speaks to you in Spanish, but then switches to English when you don't reply. So, you are the spy we have been waiting for. We knew we would catch you. If you are wondering what happened to your friend in room 327, I'll tell you. He was captured two days ago and is now in jail. You revolutionaries are all the same. The captain orders the soldiers to take you away under arrest. Do you plead innocence or tell the truth? But Captain, this is all a mistake. I am here to find a lost friend. I am no spy. The captain leads you into a room where three men are seated at a table. They look up when you enter. The thin one says, Wrong person. Who is this? That's not the one we want. The man says, Let the prisoner go. We are just wasting valuable time. The spy has had warning and time to escape. Is Tom the spy they are talking about? As for you, we have decided to deport you, the captain adds. Deport me? But what about my friend Tom? You cry. Tom will have to take care of himself, is the stern reply. The end. Would you like to see what would have happened if you decided to plead innocence? Going back to plead innocence. Following the mysterious note's instructions, you've returned to the Hotel Maya. But it was a trap. Soldiers capture you and tell you your friend is already in custody. They call you revolutionaries. Captain, it's all a mistake. I was on my way to my own room. I just came to this room by accident. I am no revolutionary or spy. You must believe me. The captain laughs. They all say that. You are all the same. Spies, radicals, thieves. We have a way to deal with you. You are handcuffed, put into a jeep, and driven to Merida. There you are thrown into a small, damp, evil-smelling cell in the local jail. The captain comes to see you the next day to tell you that the judge has given you a 30-year sentence for plotting to overthrow the government. But I've had no trial, you protest. We caught you red-handed, and we don't believe in trials anyway. These are dangerous times. You can call this the revenge of the Maya. You have angered their ancient gods. He laughs. He stubs out a cigarette in the earthen floor, sticks his short brown hands in his pockets, and walks away from your cell. You grab the bars of the cell and scream for help. Three guards at the end of the corridor just laugh. You will be in jail for a long time. The End Would you like to see what would have happened if you decided to on to Chichen Itza? Going back to on to Chichen Itza. In Merida, you plan with Manuel to drive to Chichen Itza, with its many historical ruins. But Manuel's intuition tells him you may want to go to Ushmal first. Ushmal is far older. The highway to Chichen Itza runs through flat, scrubby land. A few houses or huts line the road. Then you see a giant form on the horizon. It grows larger and larger as your bus approaches, until the bus stops for good in the monument's shadow. El Castillo, the giant pyramid, looms above you. Broad avenues lead out from the pyramid to other stone buildings, to courtyards, and to the evil ball court where Maya lost their lives if they lost the game. One avenue leads to the cenote, or giant well, which has taken the bodies of many sacrificial victims. A group of twenty people stand quietly at the base of El Castillo. Your eyes follow a finger pointing up into the sky. The top of the pyramid is glowing with a bright red color. Where is it coming from? 
A large spacecraft hovers over the pyramid. What does it mean, Manuel? What's happening? You are frightened. These Mayan ruins are contact points for other planets. That group of people has been asked to leave Earth for the planet Murganatic. You believe in UFOs, but now that you are seeing one, it is frightening. Manuel, this is incredible. Why is that thing here? Earth is seen as a leading planet. Other civilizations want to learn from us. They send emissaries to ask us to return with them to an outer galactic congress on the rights of life in the universe. That is the last group of people attending the congress to depart. If you think Tom may have gone on the mission, you should join them. Is Manuel making this up? There is no denying the bright red glow on top of the pyramid. Do you join the space mission? Or stay and finish your job? Sorry, I didn't get that. Do you join the space mission? Or stay and finish your job? One by one, the group standing at the pyramid enters the spacecraft by the transporter beam. You notice that halfway to the spacecraft, their bodies begin to glow. No one seems to be afraid. Gaining confidence, you step into the transporter beam and are carried up into the spacecraft. You hear nothing as you shoot up and away into the far reaches of the universe, to the planet Murganatic and the Great Congress on Intergalactic Life. You wonder why the Mayan sites were chosen as contact points. Their brutal and complex society seems an odd choice for other planets. Who knows what lies ahead? The End Would you like to see what would have happened if you'd decided to stay and finish your job? Going back to stay and finish your job. Manuel explains that other galactic civilizations want to learn from us, so some people are preparing to travel to an outer galactic congress on the planet Murganatic. Manuel advises you that Tom may be part of the mission, in which case you should travel into space. It is all quite incredible. You laugh out loud and point at the spacecraft and the people entering it. Great show, Manuel. Great show. Tell me, how did you do it? What is it, the set for some movie? Manuel does not smile and does not speak. He shakes his head and moves off to join the group who are going up the transporter beam into the spacecraft. As he walks away, Manuel turns to you and motions with a small rod. A beam of light shoots out of it. Suddenly you are so frightened that the hair on the back of your neck stands up and goosebumps appear on your arms. The beam of light is like an eraser, and it wipes your mind clear of all memory of the day. Your last image is of a smiling Tom aboard the Star Cruiser. Suddenly the spacecraft is gone, and you are standing at the foot of El Castillo. You can't remember anything that happened after your breakfast with Manuel. It is quiet in the great courtyard. Your big chance has come and gone. You blew it. The end.